Hi, I'm Wolfgang. I'm the president and CEO of Cool House Games in Vancouver. Uh, we, ha we do both contract work as well as original, uh, original games. So in the last year, uh, the team at Cool House has actually had four number one charted games uh, on iOS and Android, uh, and all of them have had eight out of 10 uh, or higher critical reviews. So uh, we did Madden NFL 2011 football on iPad. Uh, we did Tiger Woods Golf on iOS. We did uh, Madden NFL 12 on Android. And uh, we also did Tiger Woods, the, uh, the freemium, premium version as well. Uh, but besides that, we also have original games. We have a, a, a music game called Imp Surf the Music on iTunes that's been out for a couple of years. And uh, we're doing another version of that coming out later this year. Uh, that's something we've published ourselves. And also, uh, we have a hidden object game called Antique Shop, uh, which will be coming out uh, in May of this year. So, Cool House is about a combination of contract work. Uh, our publisher partners include Electro Electronic Arts, Activision, Square Enix, uh, Atari, uh, Zoo Publishing, and, and Sony BMG, uh, and a variety of others as well. Uh, cool House has been in business for almost seven years. It'll be seven years this July. Um, and I started a company myself. Uh, previously to Cool House, I worked at Radical Entertainment uh, and worked on Simpsons Hit and Run as well as other titles at Radical. And before that, uh, so many other people have in Vancouver, I worked at Electronic Arts uh, on NHL hockey and uh, started the company with a small group and we've steadily been growing. Um, and uh, expanding, so uh, things have been going well for us in the, in the last number of years. Um, the team at Cool House is probably amongst the most diverse uh, of any company, not just, uh, not just video games. So we have people at, at Cool House who are from uh, France, from uh, China, from Japan, from Indonesia, from Iran, from Spain, from the United States, from the UK. I think maybe even Canadians are in the minority. <laughs> uh, so it's a very, very diverse, very multicultural team uh, at Cool House. And, and we, we, we take great uh, pains to, to keep it that diverse and, and even to expand it as well. Uh, how we work depends on the project. It's, uh, it's a very organic uh, approach. Uh, we use some, some agile, that people call agile, but we don't use agile methodology itself, uh, but it's very organic. Uh, the key thing at Cool House uh, is that everybody does contribute. Uh, so an artist, for example, instead of just doing 2D or 3D art, they would also be contributing to game design. Uh, programmers, the same thing. Some of our, our best game ideas, game uh, play ideas, come from our programmers, for example. So it's a very creative studio uh, where everybody does contribute. Everyone is valued uh, for their creative contributions. Uh, the last thing we want is, uh, is someone to feel like, like they, they don't have the ability to contribute to uh, uh, the games that they make. Uh, that's generally, in, in a nutshell, what the philosophy of Cool House is. Yeah. We've actually, through the recession of the last two years, have actually expanded. Uh, we've laid no one off in, in three years <laughs> uh, and expanded the company. Um, and the key to that is, is just one word, it's diversity. Uh, cool House is probably one of the most diverse studios anywhere. Uh, besides the, uh, the people who work at Cool House, we, are, we are also develop on virtually all of the platforms and are licensed for all of the platforms. And so while we've had most of our success in the last few years with mobile, and I think everyone knows that mobile has expanded dramatically, uh, we've been do doing no mobile since uh, Cool House started seven years ago. But we, we were also licensed for DS and Wii. We've done some projects on, uh, on DS and Wii for Activision, for example. Uh, and we're currently doing a cross-platform project uh, across all those platforms, including uh, Xbox 360 and PS3, uh, as well as the Mac, uh, as well as iOS and, and Android. Uh, that project is called Capsized. It uh, is from a publisher in the United States called Zoo. But it demonstrates the kind of thing that Cool House is about. It's a diversity of uh, people, it's a diversity of, uh, of platforms, it's a diversity of genres. Uh, and in a nutshell, that's what we're about. Uh, the biggest challenge is, is finding people who, who enjoy doing a variety of different things and who fit in, in our culture. Uh, so uh, we don't, uh, we're not about hiring a lot of people very quickly. 
Uh, we only hire about five or six people a year, that's it. Um, we'd rather turn away projects than be forced to uh, uh, bring too many people on, on board too quickly. Uh, we've seen other companies grow very quickly and hire too many people too fast and, and in the long run we find that that doesn't work. So the challenge is really finding uh, very talented people who are excellent at what they do, who fit in with our culture and, and our approach. Um, Right. Once we get them, though, it seems to work. Uh, more than half the people at Cool House have been there since for seven years, uh, and the other half have generally all been there for, for about two or three years. Uh, again, we only hire about five or six people a year. So we, we take quite a bit of time to find the right people to add to the team. Uh, we don't hire quickly. Uh, so, you know, sometimes people, uh, they have urgent needs, they need a job quickly. <laughs> uh, and, but we're, we're not very fast at, at bringing people on board. So the biggest challenge is to find people who do fit in with our culture because it's a little bit different than other, other studios. We don't hire people just for a specific project. Uh, we hire people for the long term and uh, uh, who have to share the same vision and, and the same goals as we, that we do. The vision is to, is to uh, just make great games and have a lot of fun doing it. Um, we, for example, we, we, don't, we haven't done crunch in four years. Uh, there's a little bit of overtime, maybe the odd Saturday, but we've always had uh, every Sunday and every, every holiday off. And, uh, but, you know, it's a typical thing when you deliver a milestone, you have to put in a little bit more effort. But uh, the goal, and you can't, to, to my mind, you, you cannot be creative if you're doing crunch. Uh, and I think that, it, that hurts our industry all the way around. Uh, if you're doing lots of overtime for a long period of time, the first thing that, that goes away is creativity. And our industry is, is based on creativity, it doesn't make any sense. So the long-term goals of, of Cool House is, is to uh, make great games, whether it's you know, with a publisher partner or whether it's our own original games. Uh, it's to come up with games that are both commercially and critically successful. Uh, we want to continue to have number one games. We want to continue to have eight out of 10 or higher reviews, uh, regardless of the project that we work on. Well, I think what we've seen is, is a, 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 a very big change in Canada over the last uh, five, six, seven years since I started Cool House. To give you an idea, when I started Cool House, there were about 14,500 people working in, in video games in, in Vancouver. Uh, and now there's only about 4,500. And so there's been a, a big drop in the number of people working in video games uh, in, in Vancouver and, and BC generally. Uh, that's coupled with, with the fact that it has grown dramatically over those, those years in Quebec and in Ontario. And the only thing that you can really point to, that uh, the reasons why, is because of the tax credits that both Quebec and Ontario have implemented, whereas BC really hasn't. Uh, BC in the last year has provided some tax credits, but they are less than half what they are in, in, uh, in Ontario and Quebec. And uh, that's the one big factor that has changed everything. You know, the landscape of video games in, in Canada uh, is, are those tax credits in Quebec and, and Ontario. So uh, we are constantly talking to the BC government, um, but they haven't made any changes yet. Uh, we hope they do and make it a level playing field with, with other provinces. And uh, uh, we'll see what happens. So. Uh, so yes, the video game industry in Vancouver has gotten considerably smaller. Uh, Ubisoft just closed uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, Nexon a year and a half ago they closed. Uh, last year uh, Disney Propaganda Studios closed. Uh, most of the studios, the big ones that are owned by big publishers in Vancouver have downsized. Uh, Electronic Arts is much smaller than they used to be. Uh, Activision Radical, where I used to work, is much smaller than they used to be. Um, and uh, that's the way it's gone. The, uh, the jobs basically have all gone back east to, on to Ontario and, and Quebec. What's the future of video games? Yeah. Oh, well, if I had a, a, a mirror, you know, if I had a magic ball, <laughs> uh, nobody knows for sure. 
but obviously the, the current trend is for mobile um, and, uh, uh, and digital downloads, of course. And so that's sort of what we can see in the immediate future. You know, who knows uh, further down the line? I mean, uh, six, seven years ago, nobody real, would realize that iTunes would be the dominant factor uh, in, uh, in, in areas other than music. Um, and now iTunes is the dominant factor in not just video games, but books, film, TV shows, so on and so forth. Uh, who knows what it's going to look like in, in six or seven years. But currently, um, you know, the future looks very strong for mobile. Uh, the future looks very strong uh, for cross-platform. Uh, I think we'll always have console. But I think that the trend seems to be that console is, is getting less and less. Uh, PC has been in, in trouble for a long time. Um, so, you know, even, even massively multiplayer online games like World of Warcraft, for example, are, are starting to lose their luster. Um, Activision just recently laid off a whole bunch of people because World of Warcraft is not doing as well as it has in the past. Uh, I think what we're headed towards is, is very strong mobile, uh, social, obviously. Um, and niche markets where console, PC, uh, Mac, uh, online, uh, the, they'll always be there. Handheld, DS, and Vita will always be there uh, in different forms, but they will be smaller markets. Uh, and, and social mobile, especially, uh, seems to be the trend for the future.